Good morning, family. How are you guys on this precious, I think it's Wednesday morning. Amen. Yes, Wednesday. You guys got me up in here early in the morning. They done made me snatch my wig back on this morning. Amen. And come on here and do this video for you guys. And I'm not even supposed to be on here. Okay, because I told you guys that I was going to leave the videos for YouTube. But this, this topic, y'all been blowing up my inbox okay <laughs> yeah I've been blowing on my inbox and this is something that I really feel led by the Lord of by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come on here early in the morning and give you guys a little bit of clarity as far as to what's going on in the world and my Christian pastoral point of view so that those of you that are listening at home may be able to not only be edified as the body of Jesus Christ but also to give Give some clarity to those that may be confused and may not know what's going on in this time and in this season. So I welcome each and every one of you guys that are coming on here this morning. I bless you guys in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I also bless those that are going to be watching the replay. Amen. And I really want you guys to listen to this message with an open heart because I am going to touch so many topics as far as like, you know, sin, politics, things that's going on in the church, abortion, um, you know, racial discrimination. Like I'm going to literally go in on what's happening in the judicial system I'm going to go in and, like I said, give you guys my point of view as far as to what's happening in politics, what's happening in the church from my point of view, okay? Now, I ain't nobody special. I am special because I am a daughter of the king, okay? But I know some of you guys that may be familiar with me and some of you guys that may not be familiar with me will get to see this video. So I just want you to understand that I am just a, a, a follower of Jesus Christ like you, okay? And if you're not a follower, of Jesus Christ, I pray that after this video, you will have some clarity, biblical clarity, and you will be able to choose for yourself, you know, what God you're going to serve. But I know that as far as me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And I can only pray the same thing for each and every one of you guys. So as you guys can see, the topic is called Christianity and politics. Okay. So as many of you guys can see yesterday on my page, I was putting a lot of things on there, you know, with the, uh, um, you know, what was going on with the debate and stuff like that. And this is, a t I'm going to be honest with you guys from the jump. Okay. I have never voted in my life. Okay. Why have I never voted? I never voted because I never believed in, um, in politics as far as, you know, people, um, you know, this candidate, Republican, Democrats or whatever. It was always a bunch of this, okay, and never a, a lot of action, or they would do a little bit of things, but not, you know, because we cannot depend, amen, God bless you, hermana, we cannot depend on men, okay, to change the world for us, okay, that's number one, we cannot put our expectancy on a man, okay, but as the church, what does God require of the church, no matter who is in position, right, because those that are in position, whether they may be in position in the church, or whether they may be in position in political offices, okay, or whether they may be kings and queens in different nations, the people okay, ultimately get put on those positions and on those platforms because God is the one who gave them that authority and, and that, you know, to be there speaking for the people on his behalf, okay, when it comes to the church. Now, there are people that will try to get, you know why? Because the, the seat of a pastor and the seat of a, of a politician or like a president or whatever, office you in, that is power. You have power. Now, those people that are in politics, they got physical power in the world. But us as pastors, we sitting on a chair with spiritual power, okay? So God is shifting things right now. He is changing things in this world so that us as the followers of Jesus Christ that we are, we can rise up with the authority that we have and the authority that we have been given. But a lot of 
of people in politics, they don't want the church and the evangelicals to rise up and speak, okay, and give our two cents in there. Why? That's why many people are like, oh, you know, churches shouldn't be getting involved in politics. Are you kidding me? Have you not seen the Bible? Do you not see how many Christians died for this, for this call? Because what we stand for, it goes against human thinking. Because what God, what Jesus Christ came to do in the hearts of the world, what does John 3, 16 said? It said, for God so loved who? The world that he gave his son, his one and only begotten son, his one and only. So that means that God didn't give Buddha. He didn't give Muhammad. He didn't give all these other fake idols and gods. Okay. He gave to the earth, his one and only begotten son. So that whosoever, whether in politics or not, whether Jew or Gentile, whether you black or Mexican or white or Salvadorian or Chinese, or whether you're Indian, he gave us the right to whoever believes in Jesus Christ so that whoever believes in his son shall be saved and they shall not perish. So the reason why many people in society today, whether you're in politics or in the church, the reason why many people are perishing, because I say that because in the church of Jesus Christ, so many people are perishing. So many people in the world are perishing. Why? Because they can no longer think for themselves. We're living in a generation where you letting other people think for you and you don't have a mind for yourself to see what's facts. Like facts should be everything. I come from New York. I'm from Brooklyn. To us, anybody doing this, it was just this. Because what speaks is action. What speaks is facts. So yes, I'm just a little crazy girl from New York from Brooklyn. Yes. I may not be qualified to be a pastor by the, you know, by many people. Many people may look at me and be like, you know what? You is so not qualified for the calling. You is so, God bless you, Miss Trina. You are so not, you know, a, a, a pastor's wife. Like, you know, because what they used to seeing for themselves, okay, is a pastor's wife that's just like really quiet, right? Amen. God bless you, hermana. Somebody that's not really outspoken, just like the president that we have now because of his, he's from New York. Those that are from New York, we are, I think those, I don't know if it was something in the, in New York city water. We just outspoken people. We just do. It's hard for us to be quiet and not speak our mind and not put in our two cents and just walk away because the facts are everything. Amen. God bless you, Oscar. Amen. The facts are everything. And we need to be, be, we need to be led by facts and not by certain people who are because the people that can't think for themselves, you know, people, God bless you, Dorothy and everybody that's connected on there. Amen. Those, you know, you got to be able to think for yourself because if you letting yourself be led by somebody who is blind and you don't know how to seek truth for yourself, you're going to walk into this ditch and you're going to fall into the ditch because somebody who was blind, who didn't have spiritual discernment, somebody who didn't have, you know, a worldview on, on, on certain topics that are important like abortion, like homosexuality, you know, things like that, because those things are what's really moving the nation. Okay, this nation is being overtaken by sin. Sin is stealing the nation that you love so much right up underneath you. And it's so important. And that's why I registered to vote this year. If you haven't registered to vote, I really encourage you to stop what you're doing this week and really take some time out and go reg register to vote. Okay, and we're not registering to pick sides. Okay, it's not all you know, this is the Trump wagon and, and it's, you know, 20 Trump 2020 and it's just, you know, him and blah, blah, blah. No, we as Christians need to be looking at what is right. Okay. What is morally and spiritually right in God's eyes. Okay. So it's not that we're blinded by Trump. It's not that he has some spiritual juju on the Christians. It's not about that. It's about doing what's right. Whether a president is Christian 
Christian or not, we have an obligation to pray for those. Can I get an amen, somebody? Those that read the word, no. Those that read the Bible, those that read the book of God, the scripture, the word, we have an obligation. This is what we need to be living by. Not what everybody else tells us, not what your pastors tell you, not what your sister tells you, what your cousins tell you. We need to pray for those that are in leadership, whether they got a stuttering problem like Biden, whether they got issues like Trump that he, you know, he just very outspoken. We need to be praying for all of those that are in leadership because our nation is going to be overtaken by Christ, by the devil. And then persecution is going to come. And those things that you've seen in the Christian movies are going to become alive in you. And unless you're biblically and spiritually sound and strong, you are not going to be able to stay stand when people come knocking at your door, okay, trying to kill your children, trying to kill your husband, trying to kill your wife, trying to rape them. Why? Because people who are satanic are trying to do away with the police. Why? Because of racial injustice by a few officers. Just We should not do away with the police because a few corrupt police officers chose to do something inhumane because when you take somebody's life the way George Floyd's life was taken and a lot of many other people whether black or Hispanic because a lot of Hispanic people have been also killed by police officers but you don't really see that making the news and making the headlines right we don't really see that on the news how many of us see that on the news but it is happening all over the place whether in the United States or out. You know, racial injustice, corrupt officers are everywhere. So this is not something new. So this is why I say to you guys, it's important for us to wake up. This is not something new, but we need, a, 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 we need the United States to be founded on truth, on the truth that God created. We are supposed to stand united, believing in God, but this nation as a whole has turned away from God. And when you may be like, no, Pastora, you're just talking a lot of smash. No, I'm not. In the school system. Let's start with the school system, okay? Not only do parents have to send their children to school because now two parents got to work and sometimes even two parents working is not enough because the the way the system is set up, okay, the way we got to, you know, we all need medical. My husband got a bomb job, okay, and yes, I get a little bit of military benefits every month, okay, but sometimes it's not enough. Why? Because we have a church. We have a financial obligation obligation with the church. Okay. God bless you. And we need to be taking care of things like that. But I'm thankful because God, you know, because when we take from what's ours to give to God and to give to his kingdom, he always takes care of us. So even if there t- may be times that I'm lacking with certain things, whether it may be medical or whether, and you know, we have insurance, but the insurance ain't enough. You know why? Because we have to, my husband having a good job and me having a good job, we got to pay taxes, okay, on top of the thousand dollars that we paying just to have the coverage, if we don't, if we can't afford the co-pays and we cannot afford the medicine and we cannot afford the doctor's visits, what good is it to have insurance and you got to pay, but this is for working class people. You understand? This is for regular Americans that are middle class, okay, that have to deal with this situation. So they putting penalties on, uh, you know, hardworking Americans and Trump is trying to be like, like, no, we need to do away with that because that's not helping the people. They need better health care. But Obama put that whole, you know, thing in, in place where we got to, you know, pay. You Oh, you love your doctor. You get to keep your doctor. Yeah, but you got to pay a penalty if you don't got insurance. And you better make sure that he's within your network. Because if he's not within your network, because what they did was, you know, they set up a lot of people, okay, to lose the doctors that they really like. But they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to give you the real on that. Okay. So like I said, regular working class people got to spend because the food 
it keep, the prices on food, it keeps going up. The prices on meat, the prices on juice, the prices, even if you go to Aldi's, which is like very, very affordable for, you know, everyday moms and things like that. But there are people that they're like, no, they don't like Aldi's or whatever. They waste their money in Walmart or whatever. It, that's a whole nother situation. But food should be something that's easily accessible to many people. But a lot of single moms that are working two jobs to sustain one child and they can't even make it. Why? Because the sin has creeped up in the world. Men no longer want to be fathers and take care of their babies. So we seeing so much sin in the women, right? And in the men. Why? Because women is just twerking and showing their little tatas and their little boom boom. You know what I'm saying? So you seeing so many women showing their stuff and, and twerking on Instagram. I don't know about you, but my Facebook, okay? My Instagram, it looks like pornography whenever I go on the news feeds to try to see what's going on with the world. And ain't nothing going on in the world but women showing their tits and, and women showing their butts, like just twerking on the camera. And this is what society has become. So people want to blame Trump for sin coming into the world. No, sin came into the world because, amen, and I told you, I'm going to piss some people off today. So don't inbox me with your crap because I'm not for it this morning. Amen. I'm going to give you guys the real and what God put in my heart. Okay. We should, as women, as mothers, shouldn't have to be looking at the internet. Like, yo, my kids can't even have social media. Like, they can't, like, you know, they may have, um, I did one for my daughter. Like, you know, the Boricua baby and stuff like that. And one for my son for his beats or whatever. But they not managing it. I'm managing it. Why? Because there's so much sin and so much things that want to take away the innocence from our children. So what happens when people take away your innocence? They take away your, your ability to be able to recognize what sin is. That's what happened with Adam and Eve. The devil was like, yo, have this apple. Eat this apple. You know, no, but God said I shouldn't eat this apple. God told me don't eat the apple. No, God this just doesn't want you to be like him, right? So what happens when you start to feel amen, hallelujah, that you are bigger than God. Now you are a rebel. Whether you want to be a rebel or not, now you automatically a rebel because now you making decisions for yourself. Now you saying, yo, I ain't going to church because I don't want to go to church. I'm not going to church and I don't give a damn what my pastor says, right? So now when you become a rebel and you, because what happened? You let sin in. So because you letting that worldly music enter your spirit, you letting it enter your mind you letting it enter your heart so now you like the daddy yankee now you like the cardi b now you like the beyonce now you know you like the world like the world you like the bachata you like the little salsita right you like that so when you hear the pastor giving you the word right it feels like a hammer falling on your toe and you looking at him like he's the bad guy but no he's the prophet sent by god to give you the world to liberate you because the bible says again john John 3 16 for those that right God so loved the world right the world that he gave his son so that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish so if you want eternal life you cannot perish while you here on the earth even though I'm not trying to judge you if you listen to worldly music let me tell you something y'all don't know crap about worldly music I know about worldly music I used to listen to Mob Deep I used to listen to Little Kim lollipop you know a Nicki Minaj legs open like this like you understand the the locks Jada kiss you know um 50 cent a, a Nas you know Jay-Z Biggie Smalls like Tupac that was my era Eminem that was my era okay so the the rap music that you guys see today is Wakata is crap, is garbage, is nothing but a bunch of you know what you call that T painting, you know, the mixing or whatever on there, that is not real rap music. When we was in the game being brought up, we knew what real rap was. We knew what it was to really be gangster, okay? This music that you guys see now is a bunch of little kids that came from the suburbs, okay, trying to be hip and trying to be down, and it's nothing but a bunch of sin because all they talk about is my titties is bigger than yours, my booty is bigger than yours, I could twerk it, but they all fake and they all not original because they all doing the 
the same thing. Why you think so many women want to show their boobs? Why so many women? All right. It looks the same. We all seen the same damn titties. It's just different sizes and different damn colors. Same booty. One could twerk and one could not twerk good. Either way, it's just a bunch of sin. So now women of women, young women, whether you old, whether you young. Okay. So now you want a man to marry you. You want a man to accept you and your baby. You want a man to be there for you and be a good father. But how the hell is a man going to be a good father to you? How the hell is a man going to be a good man of God for you? If all you showed him up front is your titties and your butt. So you cannot expect a man, a, a, a man that's like, because what happens is a woman that's in the world, she's exhibiting herself on Facebook. She's exhibiting herself on social media. And this has to do with Christianity and politics. So for those of you that may be like, you know, I'm just rambling on. I'm not rambling on. I know what the Lord gave me to speak about and I'm going to speak it. Whether people, those that have ears that want to hear what the spirit of God is going to speak this morning, they're going to hear it. And those that don't want to hear it, they don't got to hear it. But I'm just being honest with you. Okay. Because this is what has made this nation become what it is. Okay. Little girls have lost their innocence. They have lost their way because you listening to all this rap music that's just perverting your mind perverting your spirit you made them become rich you made them become millionaires by you know just speaking some dumb stuff on on the radio and you guys is like yeah yeah you know that's hot like yeah you know because that's why God says if you love the world the love of the father is not in you Okay, the love of the Father has to be in you so you cannot, as a woman, okay, throw yourself out there to society, to men, to, because you're not throwing yourself to a man of God. You're throwing yourself to a vulture, a man that's going to come to you and you want him to look at you and love you for who you really are. He's not going to see you. He's not going to see your suffering. He's not going to see your past. He's not going to see what you've been there, been through. He's not going to be a man that's going to come through and, and be like, yo, babe, let me be a man. Let me lead by a spiritual example. Like, yo, let me take care of the bills. Let me, you know, take the kids to school for you. Let me help you clean the house. Let me be a man and let me rub your back. Let me like be there for you. Let me be your, your support system. No, he's coming to, you know what? Okay. He's going to come and use you for two good minutes, three good minutes. If that's all he got. And you're going to be like, well, what, what, you know, what was going on? Like, all right, we did this. This was a good thing, right? It felt good, but it was, he was feeding your mind mentally just to get in those panties okay so real women of God we have to rise up above that we gotta break out of the system break out of the the demonic hold that Satan has on our minds and share this video those of you that are watching right now share this video because there's girls everywhere twerking and showing and popping and locking and they need somebody needs to preach it to them but pastors ain't preaching it to them because if they preach it to them they're going to leave. If they preach it to them, they're going to want to knock them upside their head. If they preach it to them, they're going to be every worst enemy number one. You ever seen the FBI thing, America's Most Wanted? If real pastors preach this... Let me tell you something. You know why this is happening with a lot of girls in America? This is happening with a lot of girls in America because the fathers have lost their balls. Fathers no longer have balls. Okay, so because, and I'm telling you this because look, we got two daughters in the house. You think that if my daughters, my, my, my husband has never had to hit our children ever, okay? You think that if my daughter got on social media to do this, you think my husband is not going to beat that, that kulanga? Heck yeah. Even though he has to put hands, he's going to put hands. He's going to put hands and I'm going to put hands. Why? Because we didn't raise them like that. So now we got so many parents. Now let's talk about abortion. Okay. Because so many people abortion. Okay, and fornication go hand in hand. Okay, this has to do with sin. And I'm going to get into the politics in a minute. But I got to show y'all what the Lord wants me to show you guys. So let's talk about abortion, right? So now... 
You got all these parents not raising their children, not speaking to them about birth control, not speaking to them about marriage and what it means to be in covenant with God. So you want to go and open up your legs, right? And you want to go and you want to engage in sexual activity when that sexual activity is not for you if you're not married. If he didn't put a ring on that finger, okay, that sexual activity is, is pleasure but it's only pleasurable in the confines of being a covenant with God in a marriage. Okay. So when you dating, you need to be dating a man with a purpose. Okay. You need to be dating a man with a purpose to eventually get married. But what happened? Jezebel spirits. Okay. And all these other demonic spirits have crept up in the girls. Right. So now, right. Like the little cuties movies and all that, that we see nowadays. Right. So the girls have lost their innocence. They no longer dress with a pretty little, like a pretty little girl with a pretty dress, with the pretty little bobos, right? With the little pretty shoes. No, now they want to wear tight booty shorts, right? They want to show everybody that they got a little something, something, right? They want to show the boys, right? Because now they want to excite the boys instead of trying to put their head in books and study and become somebody. So what these girls really need is to learn how to cook, is to learn how to freaking clean because they some pigs that just look sexy, right? They don't even know how to boil a damn egg. They don't even know how to make a man a ham and cheese sandwich, okay? So now you got a whole bunch of people dependent on Uber Eats and a whole bunch of people dependent on, you know, the delivery and fast food because uh, women have lost their way. So now because sin has crept in, <clears throat> okay, to their lives, now they don't want a relationship. Now, it's just, you know what, let's just do the damn thing and it, and then we'll figure it out later. And that's why so many people, that's why you see the statistics of so many single women, right? You see the statistics of so many women rising and you see a lot of them on government support and you see a lot of them not being able to sustain their home because a home was created to operate by two people, by the man and the woman. So I'm not saying that you can't work as a woman. I'm not saying that you can't go and have a career. I'm not saying none of that. You supposed to have a career. You supposed to go out there and do what you do, right? But you cannot neglect your, your spiritual responsibility that God gave you. You cooking and cleaning is a, is a don, is a talent, is, is, is some, is a gift that God gave the woman so that she can nurture the home so that she can take care of the man and be his backbone, be his support system, be a good support system to the children. But what's made it, what was making this situation go out of whack is that you sending your children to the, the to the devil's den. Okay. Because the public school system is not teaching people the foundations of Jesus Christ. They're not teaching our children in the public school system to love Jesus Christ and to not have sex. Okay. To not be kissing, to not be cursing person, okay, to respect their free, their authorities, all right, and these kids need to get freaking beat and smacked in their damn face for not knowing how to respect their teacher, okay, disrespecting a teacher that's already underpaid, you think teachers should be dealing with your disrespectful children because you just sitting there watching Netflix all day and you sitting there just getting your hair done and just like always like in the gossip. Somebody else got to raise your children and they underpaid. Like they don't need that crap. Like police officers and teachers are underpaid. They need to be getting more money than they do. Why? Because they are protecting and molding society. But you want to back up somebody in a political office that wants to defund the police like are you kidding me that's why i say the blind people they lead them into a ditch you don't gotta know about politics you don't gotta know about christianity but if your heart has some morals you would know and you your spirit will lead you to what is correct your spirit will lead you to do what is right so now you got a school system right with a bunch of satanic 
influencers, okay? Like, you know how in Instagram you got a whole bunch of people, they just influencers? Well, guess what? In the school system, there's a bunch of demonic influencers, okay? Because a lot of people in the world, they don't believe in witchcraft, okay? Let me tell you something. Witches are in the schools. Witches are in the hospitals. You know why? Because the witches from a young age want to initiate your children in the school system so that they can be initiated into their kingdom, into their demonic kingdom. So they out there putting hands on your children at school. They're out there giving your children little candies at school. And if your children are not spiritually awakened, right? Because I'm this is for discerning ears only this morning, okay? If your kids is not spiritually connected to God, if you don't cover your child every day before sending them into the devil's mouth, into the devil's den, your child is going to automatically switch and you're going to be like, dad, what happened? Like, you know, you're going to start dealing with the spiritual warfare in your home with your own kids because a witch, yes, I said it, a witch and a warlock done initiated your child spiritually and get and put hands. And because if we as Christians have power to heal the sick, right? What does the Bible say? I gave you guys authority to do what? To lay hands on the sick, to heal those that have leprosy, to raise the dead, right? He gave us authority to clean unclean spirits, to, 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 to be able to rebuke all these unclean spirits, right? So if God gave us the power to rebuke all these unclean spirits, you don't think that there's witches in the hospital? You don't think that there's witches inside? Can I get an amen to my real spiritual warriors of Christ? You don't think that there's witches in the school system, okay, that are there to do one thing, which is to initiate your child, which is to teach your child to sin, which is to teach your child to curse. If they there backing up your child, your rebellious child, because at the end of the day, that's what these witches want, a rebellious nation, Okay, they want children to rebel against their parents. That's why God says, do not spare that child, that rod, whip that freaking hiney. Okay, and teach them the morals of Jesus Christ. Teach them the good way. Teach them the right way, the righteous path. Smack the crap out of that dirty mouth when they try to come home with that foolishness and with that nonsense and show them who's really boss. Who's boss? Jesus Christ. Who are you, the parents. You are beneath me. I rule over you. You don't rule over me. You don't pay these bills. You don't wash dishes. You don't, your job is to take the trash out. Your job is to, you, you got all these parents. Oh, don't hit them, Billy. No, do what you mean? Don't hit them, Billy. Beat that crap out of that child in their butt. I'm against child abuse. I didn't say abuse the child. I didn't say kick them. I didn't say none of that. You bend that child over. I don't care how old they are. You grab the damn switch from the, the, the thing and you want three, three little good whips to the butt is enough. They're going to cry. They're going to be like, ow, it hurt. Yes, but you know what is good for them? Because if you love your child, you're going to spare them, right? Because you have to, because now, right, people are depending on the school system to raise their children. So the teacher can't whip your child. You want to send your child to the church. The, the pastor can't hit your child, right? So now you got so many kids that go into the church of God rebellious. So now as pastors, Pastors, we got to preach the word and look at rebellious kids and rebellious parents while we trying to preach the good word of Jesus Christ, right? And I'm telling you because this is what I see. I don't know what you see at church. I'm telling you what I see. I'm trying to give always the good word of Jesus Christ. And I see parents coming up in the church of Jesus Christ with rebellious teenagers that don't want to be there. And they telling the mom and dad, I don't want to be there. So you are letting your children stay home, okay, on Sundays. And I'm sorry, I can't read the messages right now. I'm going to read them later because God is really here. He's really here right now. So you cannot, you want to not go to church because your teenager don't want to go? You can't go to church because your husband don't want to go or he's not feeling it or you're not feeling it. Like you want to go, you want to pick and choose when you go to church. Like that's a, not an option. Like can you pick and choose when you go to work? Heck no. Because if you don't go to church, you're going to lose a day's salary. So you can't afford to not go to work because you need to pay them bills. You need to eat. 
you need to sustain yourself. So how dare you treat God like if he's a bum and you want to give him your crumbs and you want to say, oh God, I love you, Jehovah, Hosanna. And you want to sit there and act like you love God, but yet you don't give your tithes and offerings to the church. You don't serve in the church. You don't read your Bible. You're not connected in spirit and in truth with the brothers of Christ that are trying to do the will of God. The real brothers and sisters of Christ have to pray. The real brothers and sisters of Christ, they have to fast. The real brothers and sisters of Christ, they have to read the word together. Okay, in the congregation, they got to grow together. And then when they grow in those three areas, then they give their tithes and offering. And then the church has resources to be able to give. And you wonder why your church doesn't give? You wonder why the pastors are always telling you the same thing over and over and over? This nation is going to go downhill because parents, children, lawyers, doctors, attorneys, nobody wants to pray. Nobody wants to read the Bible. Nobody wants to fast. So you got people that are not willing to humble themselves before their creator. So now, right, you got what? Frozen people. You got people with frozen hearts. That's why the Bible says in the end times, the hearts of many was going to do what? It was going to wax cold because you don't got time to pray. You don't got time to fast. So instead of you praying and fasting, you gossiping about your pastor. One minute you like them, you freaking confused. One minute you like them and the next minute you don't like them. Why? Because the doors that you got open, okay, you letting the children rule over you. You letting the husband rule over you. Now I'm not saying the husband should and rule over you. But when the husband is making you not want to go to church, when the husband and the child is telling you as the woman of God, because women of God are more smarter sometimes than men. Because if you look at the churches, it's mainly filled by women. The men don't want to align themselves. Why should they? You as women that are in the world have given them too many titties and booties to look at. So they like, why am I going to go to church and get right with God? I want to live in the moment, right? I only got one life to live, right? I'm going to drink all the alcohol who I want. I'm going to date all the women I want. I'm going to be with all the shorties that I want to be with. So they don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want to hear, oh, you got to be responsible, man of God. You got to go help your woman mop. You got to go help your woman rub her back. You got to rub her, you know, put a little bubble bath before her. You got to go and, and parent your child. You got to go work and sustain your child. Your child needs sneakers. Your child needs clothes. Your child needs food. Your child needs a, the basic necessities, roof over their head, electricity, water, gas. I'm speaking to the real Americans today, the real Americans that are working class. And even if you're on the system, you, it's still not enough. It's still hard to make ends meet, okay? But God, he created created the system for us so that it could work for us. But the devil has creeped in and he was like, no, you know what? We don't want the, we don't want God in the school system. So what did, what did the enemy do? He's like, not, let's not only take God out of the school system, but let's take him out of the hospital too. So now you got a bunch of hospitals that don't like Christian evangelicals. Okay. Because if you are a believer in the power of Jesus Christ, okay. If you are a believer in the one that we call the Nazarene, the dead people will rise, okay? The people that's why they rather the witch be in the hospital. The, the majority of these nurses witches in the hospital. You guys ever seen that book um, he, from Rebecca Brown? He came to set the captives free. Y'all need to wake up. I'm sorry, they keep calling me. Y'all need to wake up spiritually and see what is really going down, okay, in the hospitals. What is really going down spiritually in the churches? What is really going down in the school system? Because if you knew that, okay, if you were able to understand the purpose of Jesus Christ and why prayer is necessary, why salvation is important. So when you say to the people, no, we don't need Jesus.
Jesus. We don't need God. We go without him because we know what's morally right. You, What are you doing? You fooling yourself because you fooling yourself, right? Because you believe to know what is right, right? So that's why God says, you know what? I'm going to catch the wicked. I'm going to catch those people that think that they know more than I do. He says, I'm going to catch them in their craftiness, okay? So we cannot be a nation that has said to ourselves, because I know this ain't going to be a, a, a popular topic this morning. I already know because this, what I'm speaking to you guys is, is what's going on in the church. Christians are confused. And I'm here to tell you this morning, do not be confused. Don't be confused. Stand your ground as a believer of Jesus Christ. You know, preach on what's morally right. Preach on the word. Teach people. You know, that's why the Bible says we need to be prepared when? In season and out of season. We need to preach the word. But if you know what makes people, you know what makes the believers doubt? You know what makes the believers not really believe in the message that they're giving out? Because the sin that sometimes us as believers can have in our lives. That's why it's so important for us to do away with sin. And every day renew our mind. I'm not saying that you're going to, you know, stop sinning overnight. I'm not saying that you're going to do a whole 360 overnight. I've been in ministry for 13 years. And there's still areas of my life that God is cleansing me. There is still areas of my life where I know I'm not perfect and I know that I could do better, but I'm still, he's still working on me. He, you know, God wants to work with people that are, are willing to have a, a heart and a posture and that you can just go before God and say, God, please don't let me go. Please do not forsake me. Please do not leave me. You, your heart got to be connected to God when you lay your head down at night. When you wake up in the morning, you got to pray for your, your church. You got to be connected to your spiritual leader. You got to be connected with people that have influence because pastors have influence. Political people in offices, they have influence. The, the, the political people, they have influence in the physical. But us as Christians, we have influence in the spiritual. And those that are smart, those that can hear what the spirit of God is saying to the church today, people that have spiritual influence also have worldly influence. That's why it's important to know who's advising you, who's leading you, who's teaching you, who's helping you move forward. Okay. Are people trying to help the people that you have in your life right now? Are they helping you move forward or are they keeping you stagnant? You gotta be, you gotta walk out in your purpose. God said in his word, I knew you and I formed you in Jeremiah before you were in your mother's womb. So those of you that are listening to me right now, God formed you with a plan. He already had a purpose for you. He already knew in this day, in this time, we was going to be listening. Sorry, they keep calling me. He already knew okay, that this word was going to transform your life because I believe that this word is going to transform your life because you are going to hear the good word of Jesus Christ. Okay. Look at what the word of God says in second Chronicles seven fourteen. He says, I'm so sorry. Um, he says, if my people which were called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. If you say that you are a child of Jesus Christ, you are supposed to humble yourself before his name every day, not just on Sundays. That's the difference between a true relationship. Okay. Religion will teach you to just go to church on Sundays and, you know, like, you know, do a little prayers, prayers and go back home and you good and you can continue sinning. No, he says, if my people, which were called by my name, because many are called and few are chosen. So many of you are called and many of you are chosen. He says, if you shall humble yourselves and pray and seek my face. I'm so sorry. How are you going to seek, okay, the will of God? How are you going to, let, matter of fact, yeah, I got to, um, 
I'm so sorry. I can't stand when they just nonstop calling. And it's like they know, uh, you know, they know or they don't know that it's, it's just the enemy. Because he's trying to distract what I'm giving y'all. If this word wasn't a good word, they wouldn't be calling me 15,000 times trying to get me. And I keep pressing the decline because I'm giving the word of God. But you see how the enemy is always like, it ain't an emergency. If it's not an emergency, though, it could wait. You don't got to call me 10,000 times if it's not an emergency. You understand what I'm saying? But anywho, we're going to continue with the word of God, okay? He says, if my people were to humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he says, then I will hear from heaven. So God doesn't hear people sometimes when they in their sin. God doesn't hear people sometimes when they want to use the system for themselves, when they want to use the church for themselves. No, I'm going to go and be friends with the pastor when I need something. I'm going to go to church when I need something, right? Why? Because these are not people who have the heart of God. God is looking for people in the hospitals. He's looking for people in the jails. He's looking for people in the judicial system to have a heart of God. That's why when we was having that national prayer day, that was such an important and, and monumental moment in our lives as Christians because we were seeing people from all different walks in the earth, right? And we saw them doing what? Humbling themselves up before God. And many people who are in the world were looking confused and dumbfounded, right? Because they didn't know what was going on. The gospel and the prophecy was taking place right in front of their eyes. And that's what's going to happen with many of you. Many of you guys are going to miss the moment like this. When the rapture comes, you're going to be like, but ain't nobody told me. Nobody warned me. Yes, the pastor warned you, but you didn't want to listen when you came in. You didn't humble your heart. Okay, the the the, the men and women of God try to preach it to you, but you was too busy on TikTok making TikTok videos like this, right? So when you're so busy in TikTok, when you're so busy in social media, right, and not using social media, because remember, social media is a platform. You need to use that platform for things that glorify God. Okay, so when I do my, my social media postings, I'm in there and I'm posting to motivate, to teach, to edify the women, men and women of God. So I don't use my platform to argue. I'm so sorry. I don't use my platform. They're not going to stop. Amen. Um, we just got to deal with it because, you know, the. let me see if I can unplug this stuff. Um, Amen. I unplugged one or whatever. It's going to still ring or whatever for a little bit. Amen. So, um, you know, we need to, I forgot. See, that's why the interruptions, it gets you out of the spirit. And it's like God wants to keep us in the spirit this morning. God wants to keep us in the good word, right? What I was saying, you know, so when people anyway don't want to pray, they don't want to see God, they don't want to humble themselves, right? So it's important for us to humble important for us to humble ourselves okay and and go before his face and go before let me just give me one second because i gotta um send them a t um done I'm so sorry about that, guys. Anywho, so the word of God says, right, that if we turn from our wicked ways, so it is necessary, amen, yes, it is necessary for us to turn from our wicked ways. We need to turn as a nation, attorneys, doctors. That's why in the beginning of this pandemic, when we started to see all these doctors going like this and looking to heaven, why? Because finally, they got into a position where they're realize they not God. Now they in a position and a posture of humility because what happens is with these doctors, amen, they feel that they got sometimes that they got the power to save people's life and they got it twisted. You go to school and you study to understand the human body. But the one who makes the ultimate decision is Jesus Christ, is God the Father. It is the Holy Spirit. Those three are the ones that decide when you go and when you come. And if it wasn't so, right, because what happens? Science, right? Scientists, right, they'll tell you once you die, you die, right? But what happens when somebody comes back to life. It is an un unexplained miracle. They don't have the answer for it. So it is something that comes from the heaven above. So they are the ones that determine when life comes in 
and when life goes out. So God loved, God loves when the doctors go to school. He loves when they study. I love our doctors. I love our nurses. I love our police officers, right? Because they are in service for us as, as, as Americans, right? I love what they do, right? But when you as a police officer, where you go to work every day and you don't see God's protection, okay? And you live your life in sin. If you a doctor and you live your life in sin, if you a attorney, right? And you live your life in sin, you're going to always do everything by the book. And sometimes God doesn't want us to live everything by the book. And if there is a book that we're going to live it by, it better be the Bible. Because the Bible is what's going to assure you protection. It is going to protect you against yourself. Your sin, your body, it has flesh. Your body and my body is full of flesh. So the sin always wants to dominate and do what it wants to do. So we need to tell the body and the flesh what to do. We need to submit our body and our flesh to the cross and live in the spirit. That's why we need the Bible because it's the Bible and it's a relationship with Jesus Christ that is going to teach us ultimately how to live a life away from sin. So we're going to learn how to live what? According to the fruits of the spirit, which is meekness, which is kindness, which is forgiveness. Okay. We're not going to try to cheat the system. We're going to to use the system that was created for us and we're going to make the system work for us, right? So what happens when you got pastors, bishops, leaders that are corrupt? What happens when you have political people in office that are corrupt? right? They're corrupt and it looks like the system is not working for the people because the corrupt people are in office. But if people were to do what this word says, right? If they were to humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wickedness, then I would hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land when the land is corrupt. Okay, how many of you guys is enjoying this message? Let me know if yeah, if I'm just rambling on or y'all really enjoying this message. Amen. Type in amen and say preach a sister, preach amen, Patora. Say something. Because I want to make sure that y'all receiving this. I want to make sure that you guys are, are spiritually connected and spiritually in tune with what God is saying to his people today. Amen. Once you start to live a life that's abstained from sin, once you start to stand up spiritually and pray with your pastors against the corrupt system, then things will change. Racial profiling is not Trump's fault, okay? These people rioting, these Antifas, these um, LBGBTQ and all that stuff, all these people rising and they rioting because they want to see change. But sometimes if we want to riot and we want to do things and we want to, we want our voices to be heard, God is saying to us through this word, our voices are not going to be heard through violence, through destroying other people's property, through anger and resentment and forgiveness. And you, you got to live in forgiveness. You got to live in true love. That's what made Martin Luther King the man because he knew how to put his suit on and go marching down and say what he had to say in a peaceful manner. Okay. Does that mean that they're not corrupt people that are, they, look at, they want, they want and, and done kill him the same way they don't want to kill the, the real prophets and the real men and women of God, right? Because they, the truth will set you free. But when you live in love, right? You set an example for future generations to follow, but the prophecy has to take place in the church. The prophecy is taking place in political office, the prophecies, sorry, are taking place. So we need to rise up. We need to pray. We need to do our duty and go register to vote. And we need to vote for someone that is against abortions. Okay. Someone that, because abortions do not please God, the murdering of babies do not please God. So women that are, you know, women that, that make that decision to do that. I understand some women may be raped. 
right? Some women may have, you know, had a bad experience and they pregnant, you know, by somebody that, you know, raped them, uh, you know, and they want to go and, and do that decision. Does it mean it's right? No, it is not right. But I understand why that may be an option to some women because the enemy came and took their innocence and raped them and they got pregnant by somebody they didn't choose. It doesn't mean that it's right to go and abort that baby, okay? But what's going on is that so many women are aborting their babies because why? They want to go and have consensual sex with so many people and think that they can just go run to the clinic and just abort a baby like you freaking go into the damn store and get in to pick it up a sandwich. You know, some women, they go early in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. Let me just get rid of this baby real quick. I'll be right back. I'm going to go. I'll be right back. They don't even tell you where they're going. I'll be right back. And what they do, they go to the clinic and abort a baby like it ain't nothing and come back and, and, and take a day off of work and the next day is like nothing, right? So God doesn't, he wants people to not live in sin. He wants people, homosexuals, he doesn't want Adam and, and, and Steve Okay, he wants Adam and Eve. He doesn't want men with men, women with women. It's not something that pleases them. That's why it, it goes above their intellect. That's why they cannot make a baby. God said men shall lie with women and they shall be fruitful and they shall multiply. But you cannot, if you're a lesbian, that's why you got to go and adopt. If you gay, if you a, if you a, you know a, a male male couple, that's why you can't have a baby. You got to go and adopt because science is telling Telling you one thing, but God is telling you another. That's why you cannot listen to the hype. You cannot fall into what the world is saying because people that are, whether you homosexual, whether you aborting is just as bad as being a liar and a thief. Okay, those are all different sins being a drunkard because when you are drunkard, you don't know how to act. When you live in sin, you don't know how to act. That's why you see so many police officers that are killing innocent people, homosexuals that are raising up to defend their their you know their their rights against christians okay and there are so many um you know sin in the school systems there's so many you know there is just a bunch of sin everywhere in the hospitals they don't know what to do in the judicial system they don't know what to do they don't have the answers so it, it's uh, is there's no justice people want justice to be done people want you know th they want to see change but people you're not going to see change you're not going to you're not going to have your land healed you're not going to have your nation healed your family healed until you repent until you kneel down and 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 have a conversation with the one who created you the bible says i knew you when you were in your mother's womb you don't need to know god okay he knew you all you need to know is that he chose you that's it. You just need to humble yourself and be like, listen, God, I, I recognize that you made me. I may not have spoken to you ever, but here I am. Lord, will you accept me? I believe that your son died on the cross. I believe in Jesus Christ. Like I want to accept Jesus Christ into my heart. I, and for those of you that have not accepted Jesus Christ, we're going to do it now. I want to make sure that you good. Repent now. This is the perfect time for you to repent. This is the perfect time for you to be on your knees wherever you at. Go to the bathroom. If you're crying right now and you're feeling the presence of God, it's because God is here. He, his angels are here. His spirit is here. He is watching this moment where you are going to give your life to him. So just lift your hands up and, and just repeat after me. Say, God, I recognize that I am a sinner. Say, God, I am here before your presence on this precious morning and I am repenting of my sins. Anything that I may have done wrong, whether it was drinking, alcohol, homosexuality, um, you know, lying, stealing, cheating, anything that I have done wrong, voluntarily or involuntarily before your eyes, Father God, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you, Jesus Christ, to heal me. Father, I accept the gift of Jesus Christ. I accept your one and only begotten son. And I believe in him. And now 
because I believe in him and I believe that he died on the cross and I believe that he rose again on the third day. Now I am a new creature and I declare that I no longer belong to the dark side. I no longer belong to the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness has no power and no legitimate right over me. So now, right, what happens when you do that? So now you become a sinner, right? washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So now he gives you a new life. Now he gives you a new identity. He calls you his. Now you belong to him, right? So now he welcomes you into the kingdom of God. So now you are a new creature. So now you, when you say that proclamation of faith, right? And you say that and you truly genuinely believe what's going to happen is that now the Holy Spirit which is the gift, another gift given by the Father, okay, and given by Jesus Christ. So now you're going to have the Spirit of God dwelling within you, okay? And that gift is going to, the gift of having the Holy Spirit is going to teach you what's right and what's wrong. Now you got a spiritual guide. Now you don't need no sage. Now you don't need no candles. Now you don't need no spiritual bracelets. You don't need no spiritual protection of little eyes. Now you don't need none of that. Now all you need is the, now you got the spirit and you got the word. Now with, with the belief in, in Jesus Christ, the belief in the Father, the belief in the Holy Spirit, now... You can go out there like the 12 disciples with power and authority and say, behold, the kingdom of Jesus Christ is here. The kingdom of God is here. Now you can tell other people and teach them what is the true will of God. Now those are people that are rising up in spirit and in truth, okay? Because those are the worshipers that God seeks, people that understand the basics. That's why I'm creating this discipleship, right? So that when you guys hear the discipleship that we got coming for you guys online soon, you guys will be able to, you know, connect with us on this, um, you know, online series that we're doing and you can be truly disciple to understand the basics and the power and the authority that we have as the church that this nation has tried to take from us. That's why they say we don't want evangelicals, you know, real evangelicals in the church. Why? Because there's wolves in the temple. There's wolves in political office. So we need to rise up. That's why God says in the end times, don't worry about what you're going to say. God is going to bring you before princes, before presidents, before rulers, before so many different people in high ranking powers. And you don't got to know what you got to say, but best believe that the spirit will speak through you. The way the spirit of God is speaking to many of you guys through me today is the same thing. There's times I could do a video and I don't even know what I'm talking about. And I'm just like, it's just God, like boom, boom, boom. But if I do a video without God, he's going to make me fall flat on my face. That's why we cannot do anything without him. I don't cook without him. I don't shower. I don't dress without him. Everything that I do, I do it to glorify the Lord. Whether it's sexual activity with my husband, whether it's me, you know, taking care of my children, right? Whether it's me, you know, ministering to you guys, whether it's me and the way I carry myself and the way I walk, the way I talk, my principles, my morals, when I'm cleaning, anything that I do, I'm doing it for the glory and the honor of God. So we should seek true repentance through Jesus Christ so that everything that we do can honor him, whether you in the political system or whether you just in the church, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we all going to bleed the same. We all going to die the same. And if we all bleed the same and we all die the same, that's why God says we came into, we came into the world and guess what? We're going to leave in dust like this. That's why he says, stack your treasures up in heaven. Don't worry about stacking up your treasures here to get a house. Don't worry about about stacking up to get a car. Don't worry about stacking up to pay your debt. All right. Leave your debt where it's at. Help the church of Jesus Christ and pay your tithes and offering and help build the church of Jesus Christ. Serve in the congregation. Get your hands dirty. Stop being lazy. You lazy in your house. You don't clean in your house. It's filthy. You don't cook and you don't want to go and get your hands dirty with the church either. Talking about, I don't want to go help no homeless. I don't want to go, you know, pray in the streets. I don't want to go and do none of that, right? You don't want to pray for other people and their necessities, but you want God to 
hear you and say, God, help me fix my credit. God, and give me this raise. God, like, you know how knocking it, sound, it must sound to God for him to hear us? God, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to tie. Let me just pay my credit card debt off. It sounds like knickknack to God's ears. God wants us to be obedient to his word. Go to work. Get your work. Pay your taxes. Pay the church. Humble your heart. Serve him. Don't put no excuses. Do what you got to do as a wife. Do what you got to do as a woman. Do what you got to do as a mom. Do what you got to do as a servant of God. Do what you got to do. Take your responsibilities with joy and with privilege. And then, and only then, will you be able to see the perfect will of God over your life. Amen. So I really pray that this message was a blessing to your life. I really pray that everything that the Lord had me speak this morning will be spoken directly right into your heart. I pray that before you leave, you will share this broadcast. I pray that God will touch your hearts and not be jealous. Don't be envious. Share this message so that other people in your family and in your community, this don't have nothing to do with you bigging me up. I'm going to get to where I got to get to whether you support me or not, okay? But this has to do with us sharing the will of God. Everything that I share is the will of God, okay? So we need your support. Not only who's we, me and God. We need your support. We need you to share. We need you to share this good news, right? We need you to share it on your public platform so that it can bless somebody else. Don't hold the word of God for yourself and be selfish with the word of God. You need to when the word of God is really received you share it so that other people can also receive that joy and that wisdom that you got because a lot of people they don't like to share your messages they don't like to share it because they're afraid of you really being what God wants you to be but just because whether you share it or not God is still going to get you to your destination, whether they serve or they don't. You understand? But I want you guys to be partakers of what's happening right now, okay, in politics and in Christianity. That's why I want you to share this message so that people can hear this message and wake up on abortion, wake up on homosexuality, wake up on sin, wake up on what's happening for real in this nation, and so that they can seek and have hunger for Jesus Christ themselves. Amen. So I love you guys. I got to go. I know some of you guys always ask how you could sow into our ministry. Always remember the link is above on Facebook. The link is there to PayPal. You can donate easy, safely, and securely. And also if you're watching on YouTube, you can definitely hit the link down below in the description box and donate that way as well. And I do also have um, Cash App because a lot of people always ask me if I have it. I definitely do. It's Pastora Janice Batista. So definitely continue helping us grow for God's kingdom, continue helping us do the will of God and continue just, you know, praying for us, uplifting us. If you cannot give, make sure that you're praying for us. Make sure that you're uplifting uh, the church of Jesus Christ. Make sure that you're praying for us day and night. Pray for the saints so that God's will can be done through the vessels that he has chosen for this time and this generation. So I love you guys and I will see you guys on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't went to sub this is a bonus because like I told you on the beginning of the video, I was not supposed to do this video today, this morning, but people got me upset today. They done made me smack my wig on early in the morning. Okay. And give y'all this word. Okay. So I just really pray, like I said, that, you know, God's will is just done over your life. Okay. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, Pastora Janice Batista, go and subscribe. We already have 6,090 or 80 or something like that. So the channel is continuously growing. So I just really pray that, like I said, you just go and subscribe over there. We have so many new content that is coming out that we're working on. So I know that it's going to be a blessing to your life. Amen. So God bless you, Dorothy. God bless you, Panda Bear. Amen. I love you, ladies. Amen. Bendiciones.